So this monster of a beast just arrived in my mailbox. Holy crap! It is huge, and guess what it is? It's, uh, it's literally box mining. This is one of the things that really piqued my curiosity because, you know, in the past I've done mining um, in different ways, right? So in the past I've started mining in my PC, just kind of normally speaking. But you need to wait for that to scale, right? You can't just have one GPU. That's not enough. You know, it's just like two dollars a day. You need to have six, right? And then when you have six, and you guys need to stack these, and you need to be like. 600 right so this is the start of that but anyway so what is this this is a box that you can literally put gpus inside so it's kind of like a empty shell it's very heavy too i'm um, totally should not be manhandling it like this but anyways that's life but this is something that i kind of saw i can see in the back where you can just put your gpus inside and you can start mining and in this video, I'll be answering some dying questions like, is it even safe to buy random hardware like this from China? And secondly, I'll be answering the very important question, which one is more profitable, mining or staking? So anyway, stay tuned for this episode. I'm super excited to show you guys what the results are. And also, if you haven't done so, remember to subscribe and everything, all that cool stuff. Click like too. So back in the day when I got into mining, I used something like this, which is kind of like very haphazard, right? It's just a metal frame rack that you stick GPUs in and, you know, your, your, <laughs> your power supply is exposed. It's not the most pleasant thing to have in your living room when you're kind of have guests over and you're like, what's that? You know, what is this monster and why is it so noisy? So I'm hoping with this that I can just kind of shove it into some sort of spare room. It's easy to pack. Maybe I can even put stuff on top of it. So this is what kind of piqued my curiosity. I found this on Taobao. So this is kind of the Chinese version of AliExpress. I'm not even sure if they kind of deliver this overseas, but it kind of really made me curious when I saw it because it's like a neat container to put everything inside, right? And kind of also neat about it is it kind of gets rid of you have to buy stuff. So if you understand Chinese here, it tells you, yo, they've got a motherboard inside. They got an SSD inside. They also got a power supply that's plenty powerful case here. So it's, I like got a 1,650 watt power supply. So literally, uh, in many aspects and many reasons why I bought this right now is because it's getting a little bit chilly in here. So 1,650 watt space heater. I, we're also going to compete and see like will mining right because this channel is called box mining you need to go through back to the roots a little bit will mining out compete staking you know is if so and the future of this channel more geared towards staking and should we just lose mining altogether because which one's more profitable right you want to do what's most profitable yeah <laughs> with your time, right? So I got this GPU. We're going to start testing this out on this channel. We're going to start doing a competition. But first, let's take a look at what's kind of inside. I just open the machine up and see what's inside. All right, doesn't seem to be too complicated inside. So this is what comes out of the machine straight away. So inside the machine, you have the power supply. It doesn't really say a brand on here. So this is kind of the, the heart of the power side of the unit, but it has a lot of connectors. So the, the whole idea, I mean, everything is kind of connected in terms of a computer side. So all you really have to do is kind of plug and play these graphics cards inside. So what else is inside? I have, the motherboard is already set up. It's a Honda D1000 BTC. <laughs> it should be ETH, right? Um, I'm sure the marketing department had a little snafu there. You, you can't really mine BTC on graphics cards. But anyways, that's being technical. All right, so everything else is hooked on here for us. It's like, it's not really complicated. Um, there is an SSD connected inside, so to probably use something very cheap. I mean, if you think about it, so in terms of pricing, this was roughly, so this whole entire unit itself was $267. I mean, come on, just like, 
there's PSUs or power supplies that cost more than that. So this is definitely a steal, definitely a bargain for what you're getting, like um, in terms of pricing. It's like it already includes like everything you need to get to get started. So that's the kind of the beauty of these Chinese made products. They're like razor thin margins, right? Razor thin margins. Now, th does it have RAM? Let me see. This is all unexpected. So it uses laptop RAM. So I'm not sure why you need to save space on here. I mean, it uses four gigabytes of DDR3 and it's made by Cunion. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to start installing um, a single graphics card. So this graphics card is kind of the first of many, I would say. It has enough space for six of them here. Um, in terms of power supply, I think um, it doesn't have enough power for six of the new modern ones. So the new modern, you know, third generation um, NVIDIA graphics card, they'll be consuming around 300 watts of power. So if you multiply by six, that's 1,600, sorry, 1,800, not 600, 1,800 watts of power. And that's more than this power supply can handle. So very likely I'll go for either four or five graphics cards here, depending on availability. What I'm going to slot in, what I'm planning to slot in is the 3070. It's kind of, it's kind of like maybe making sure it fits in the space. All right, it seems I have to remove this little kind of integrity, the structural um, frame here. So now I can slot this in. All right, so lucky for me, they did come with an accessories box to kind of include all the screws to get everything started. So I've got the graphics card inside already. It's kind of, I felt kind of weird to put it inside. I felt like because um, this motherboard is kind of like a sloppy motherboard, um, it doesn't clip in as usual. So I kind of have to, you know, kind of just make sure that it's really in before I kind of get started. Um, in terms of the power supply, it has a lot of these PCI Express power ports. Um, <laughs> it does look like a big disaster. Like um, it's not like a modular power supply where you know where it's connected to. Like here, you're just hoping for the best. All right, I just powered it on, and it definitely sounds like a wind turbine in here. It is. Um, it's because like they're using these industrial fans. So, so I just powered it on. Okay, my hair is a mess because I was running around, but. Um, it seems like it's not posting. It's not, it doesn't want to um, post. So it might be the case that it prioritizes a VGA connection on the back of the motherboard. So I'm going to try that out. Fingers crossed it works. It might also be that I played with a RAM just now and I just broke it. So we'll see. All right, success. So just posted. Um, it doesn't have, it seems like it's, uh, I say some, please select the pr proper boot device. That means it doesn't have the windows. Um, inside installed in there, but that's okay. I mean, we're gonna be able to install our own Windows. We can even install some form of mining OS, so I'm not too concerned so long as it posts, we're good. One of the concerns here is obviously the noise. Um, I'm pretty sure you can hear that in this recording. It is super loud. It's definitely not designed to be placed inside a regular room. It's, it's a server machine, right? So I guess, you know, that's the beauty of it. All right, now comes the most important part for any miner, which is the math. It's the funnest, funnest, funnest part of all this. All right, so what do we have here? So what's the plan? So the plan is to fit in the RTX 3070, and this is the price I can get it in Hong Kong. So this is kind of the one that I can just go downstairs and pick that up at 4,999 Hong Kong dollars, which roughly is around 593 USD. And I tested this myself and the hash rate is around 53 right now. So that's, uh, we'll keep that in mind for when we do the profit calculations. Now this case that I bought is bought from China and uh, it's in terms of renminbi, it's um, 1,750. So USD, it's 267. So that's the, kind of the cost of the unit. I'm gonna say I'm gonna put four in there for now. So um, like I said, it's mostly due to power constraints. All right, so roughly speaking, it'll cost around $2,640, not including shipping, of course. You'll probably have to add a little bit on to sh for shipping, and we can expect the hash rate to be around four times of this. All right, so 212 hash, um, mega hash per day. 
So now comes the calculation part. So you have in terms of ETH, ETH hash, 212 mega hashes per day. Wattage, I'm going to put roughly to 1,200 right now, just, just for, for, for calculations. I'm going to hit the calculation button. So this is going to calculate the profitability for this unit. Wow, it's it's not that good. Okay, so I'm looking at these numbers. This is for Ethereum. So in terms of a revenue, in terms of how much I'm going to make per day, it's roughly around $7.55. But in terms of the profit, right, because I'm burning electricity like nobody's business, that's roughly around $2.65 for my projected unit per day. All right, to be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed at these numbers. I mean, they're not phenomenal by any means, right? If I'm going to make $2 per day, it's a lot of effort and a lot of fighting for graphics cards to, to make that. Obviously, I'm using numbers that are not optimized. I think we can probably push these numbers a little bit more to optimize them, maybe squeeze another 10, 20% performance out. And it could be possible. Um, I'm going to run these calculations again for Team Red for AMD graphics cards. The reason why I didn't do that at first is because there's very little availability of that in Hong Kong. It's like it's pretty much none. So I'll rerun these once the graphics cards become available so we can figure out you know, what the probability of that is. And the other reason why it's not super profitable is because of the cost of electricity. So we're factoring the cost of electricity at around 17 cents per kilowatt hour, which roughly is what Hong Kong is charging for residential power. So this is where you know, where miners want to move to countries with very cheap power. So say, for example, if you get a super good deal, and I've heard of these good deals before where it's like around three cents or even two cents as to how low you can go for the price of electricity. But if you can actually get this cheap of a power, you can be making around $6 for one of these units. Um, and, you know, depending on how you scale, it might even be better because you can probably squeeze a little bit more performance out for each graphic start. I'm using the most conservative est um, estimates here. So anyways, you can squeeze a little bit more out and that will be a kind of bananas, right? So anyways, um, for me personally, in my spreadsheet, I'm just going to use the numbers I have because I am going to mine in Hong Kong and, you know, the electricity cost is as it is. Now, is it competitive relative to staking? This is one of the biggest questions I'm asking myself here. So what what can we expect on the staking side? So staking needs 32 ETH. So the upfront cost is a lot more. All right. So upfront cost here is around at this current point $17,000. Now, what do you expect to make from staking? So in terms of profitability, so um, this is my um, node that I started on as I'm running this on all nodes. And you can see that the profitability of this, I'm just going to go here to my node itself. You can see roughly we're making around 0.0141 ETH per day. All right, so that's ETH to USD. So it's around $7 per day. So that's the revenue. Um, in terms of cost of running the node, node costs, because the node doesn't really take a lot of power, uh, roughly it's around $10 per month. So it's equal to 10 divided by 28. Let me just say it's 28 days. So it's right now it's running at 35 cents per day. So now obviously we have to make it comparable, right? So it's the same kind of um, investment amount. All right, now comes some more fun maths, okay? So let's say because these numbers were not initially comparable profit per day because the invested amount is not the same. So I'm just saying, if you invested 32 ETH into mining, what would your profit per day be like? So I kind of just scaled it up. So we get roughly $17 $17.8 profit per day. So it's actually, you actually get more profit per day um, in mining than staking. However, however, you do have deprecation of mining equipment costs because when you're mining, you're using these graphics cards and uh, over time, they become less and less valuable, especially, you know, um, gamers don't want them anymore. New generations are going to come out. You're going to have deprecation of gear. But while also staking, on the other hand, your 32 ETH uh, will still be 32 ETH at the end, right? That's, uh, that's the beauty of staking. You're not really 
using up your ETH to do so. So this is where the math gets a little bit harder. And there's a lot of assumptions here. So you got to kind of bear with me for some assumptions that you take. So in terms of the pure revenue, so I guess not, the, um, I guess pure revenue from mining. So you get profit per day times, I'll say two years. So 730 days. Um, so you get around 12K almost 13k in terms of that revenue in terms of staking side you'll only get around 5k so that's after five years but after five years on staking side you're going to be this plus your initial 32 ETH, which is 23k right so that's what you're going to be left with now on the mining side i'm going to make a huge assumption i'm going to assume that the gear deprecates by 70 percent i mean that's Gaming hardware, let's assume that NVIDIA makes some cool graphics cards. So we're going to um, add the initial invest amount times uh, 0 0.3. So yes, 0 0.7 was lost in the process. So let's see. So total after two years, if you're mining, you end up with very little gain. Um, yeah, so you end up with 18K on this side. So yet again, this is with heavy assumptions. I mean, if you're if you're a good salesman and you manage to sell something, your your mining gear at like 50% of its original price, then yeah, you're gonna get better numbers here on that respect. So taking into like if you're you know if deprecation is very strong here, I would say that mining after two years is not as profitable as staking. Um, am I surprised by these numbers? Um, a little bit. I, I, I would have thought that mining, because it's more effort involved, would be more profitable. I was kind of hoping that. But I think the, the key, one of the key reasons why it's not profitable for me, right? And this is, these are numbers are geared towards me because I'm not, you know, buying cheap electricity in China, etc. This is because of the, expensive electricity costs in Hong Kong. But I think if you if you kind of dialed up the numbers, if you said, you know, if you have two cent electricity for miners, um, let's say your two cent electricity, your profit per day would be around 6.67. That will make a drastically big difference, 6.67. That will make a huge difference, right? So yeah, so mining would be, I'll just put that 6.67 into this num um, calculator and boom, you're going to end up with like way more mo money on the mining side of everything. But yeah, I think so that's the key here. So if you have very cheap electricity, you're going to have, uh, it's going to be more profitable to mine than to stake. But if you have, say, if you have to pay residential electricity prices, then sucks to be you it's uh it's gonna be a little bit hard to break even after two years depending on how um how fat how well you sell your gear so that was a thought experiment that was um interesting for me especially because i i really wanted to see which path to go down right i'm to the point where i've tested the waters for both staking and for mining and Honestly, I, I really wanted to know which side was more profitable. Where can I get my passive income from? At this current point, it does seem like staking is a better option, especially because like the node costs are like bare minimal right now. And it's just much easier to deploy on mass as well. I mean, at the end of the day, um, clicking a few buttons is much easier than just like installing a bunch of these miners because that thing is loud. But anyways, anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was educational. It's different content from what I usually put out. Um, and I hope it was fun. And I hope it was worth my time at the very least. And if you guys want to watch more videos about mining, leave a comment down below. I want definitely want to show you guys how this mining stuff works. And also, if you guys want to watch more videos on staking, I have them here. There's a full guide on how to stake your Ethereum 2.0 node. It does seem to be the better option at this point. So if you guys are interested in passive income, well, check out that staking guide. With that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hit those likes, hit the subscribe button. Off the next video.